today we're going to give a lesson that says heavenly divine message. And these are the most powerful weapons that I have ever used in serving the Lord. And this first one is Proverbs 2130. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. This is the only book that we have on this earth that is eternal. And we are to listen to this book and read it every day. We eat food for our body. We need to eat this because this is the greatest gift in the world. We learn how to live and love the way he has given us. And he says in 2 Corinthians 13, 8, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And then in John 3, 27, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. That's why if you're not reading the word of God, you're not learning anything. So he says in Psalm 12, 6, this is how important the word of God is. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. This is why we learn more when we read the Word of God than going to school, because we every day eat food for our bodies. What would happen if we didn't eat that food? The same thing happens to those of us that are serving the Lord and enjoying the greatest gift in the world. And then he says in Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6, every word of God is pure. That's what we just read. There's nothing in there that will cause you to do the wrong thing. You can't add to it or take away. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. You see, this is the greatest thing in the world in Isaiah 48, verse 8. But the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Shall stand forever. And this is so amazing in Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 3.10 And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. And then in Colossians chapter 3, is so amazing what Colossians has for all of us. And we learn a lot because when you continue to read, you just continue to keep it in your body. Then you don't forget. So Colossians 3, verse 1 through 4. Colossians 3, wait, I'm at the wrong one. If you then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are, this is the greatest thing for all of us, which are when Christ sitteth in the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We're rejoicing for the blessings of our word of God. And they are the greatest gift for every person in this universe. They cannot understand how to be born again and to see the blessings that he pours out upon us. Every promise in that book is ours. 
And after you become a child of God, every promise that he has given to us as a child of God, we were the sons of God, and this is the greatest gift in the world because he gives us all of his inheritance. And we are missing out on all the blessings when we fail to continue to study the word of God and to obey the word of God. And this is the promise that he has given to us and we, everyone, are to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. And he, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. And I pray that everybody that is listening to this program today will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And the greatest gift then is all thine. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. So today as we come, we're going to read just a little from 1 John, because in the last days, you're to read 1 Peter and 2 Peter, and you're to read 1, 2, and 3 John. And this today is a blessing because 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we, this is the greatest blessing, by receiving the gift of God and then it comes to you. Then keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You see, these are the last times that we're going to be here. This is the great tribulation period that's going to come after we're raptured to be with the Lord in Revelation chapter 4. That begins in Revelation chapter 6. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected, Hereby know we that we are in him. You see, you have to read these. And then your day goes to like a different per day. There's something about it. He that saith he abideth in him ought also himself, this is, also to walk even as he walks. This is, a, we're to live like him. We're to be like him. And then he says in verse 7, now this is 1 John chapter 2, verse 7. Brethren, this is, I write no new commandment unto you. But this is amazing. It's all has given us the old commandments which you had from the beginning. He never changes. The Word of God never changes. And then the great blessings, the old commandments is the Word which we have heard from these beginnings. And see, it stays just the same. And this is how we are to listen and know the Word of God. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past. We're children of light. We're saints of light. And the true light now shineth. Our lives are different. We think different. We live different. We love everybody just like he loves us. And then verse 9, he that saith, this is the most amazing truth in the world. And this is, he's, this is, he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. You know what he says about hating someone? If you hate someone, you are a murderer. This is a sad thing, but it's true. 
And this is why we're to love every person. And then he says in verse 10, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. I want all of you to know I'm 78 years old. I counsel with people all the time. The one thing that he has given to me is love for the whole world. And now I'm not going to give all of this to you, but I want you to just listen to the world's last dictator. I had to give this to you because you need to receive Christ as Savior today. The conflict in heaven ended with Satan's defeat and his final overthrow from heaven. He is cast out of heaven into the earth. Now this is in Revelation chapter 12 and Revelation 13. See the fact of Satan's hostility. The two worst rebels in all human history, they are not animals, but man. The lamb who holds the title deed to the earth is to come shortly and take over his possession. Satan knows it is woe time for the world, the day of Satan's greatest miracles. Now, if you as a child of God know Christ as Savior, you are to right now this day, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then I'm giving you these, so I want you to be ready, because no one knows when they're coming. And it's already beginning. The Antichrist are already in the world. And this is why I'm giving these to you, because my burden for every person has got greater since I know, but as many as received him, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I want you, as soon as I get off of this air, I want you to get on your knees and pray and ask God to give you eternal life. But Grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I guess I left one out here, the most important one. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, once you know this, there's nothing that can keep you from going to heaven, and that's what everybody needs. For God so loved the world that he gave every person he loves the same. And we are to do the same thing. And this is, in your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why you have to be born again. And your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord and your body goes back to dust. And this is why I'm here today, so that you can know that you are born again. And these are heavenly divine messages that we all need. The twofold ministry of the gospel preached in all creation. This is how we are to live. To present every man perfect in Christ. Now this is Colossians 1. 28. Now this is something you have to live, not the way the world is, not the way people are, but whatever this book says, and nothing else will get you to heaven. And this is Colossians 1, 28. When we, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's how we're to live. And this is something that very few people know what they're doing. So we see here, as he's given this to us, Ephesians 1, 23, 
which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We are to know that we are born again, and you will change, but you have to read the word of God. And then we find the person of Christ that went to the cross to die for us. And here he is, died for the sins of the whole world, willingly. And we should willingly tell people about Christ. And this is the greatest gift. And it's the sense faculties of the spirit, the spiritual faculties are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. That's how we live. And this, the exaltation of Christ, he's the creator, he's our redeemer, and this is the greatest gift in the world, the glory and his work. And everything that we learn is from this book, 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3. And when you start to learn these, you want to turn to the places that you can understand. First, second, and third John is the very best, but you have to have something and the book of John, you should read the book of John through first. It's only 21 chapters. And it teaches you the things that you need one thing at a time because you cannot continue to read and study until you know what you're doing. So he says in 1 Corinthians, this is the greatest thing, uh, is another one that is good. But right now, we want this one because this is 1 John 3. 22 and 3, not 23. Here we, what is what he says. While they behold your, this is something that we all need. Why, why, this is why they, the blessings of these, whose adorning let it not be the Servant warning on pinning the hair and of wearing in mid are the putting on of apparel. We get mixed up when we don't obey what he says. This is the greatest blessing because every one of us in 23 and 24, this is the greatest blessing for all of us to understand and know what we're doing and how we're understanding it. Okay, this is 1 John 3, 23 and 24. And this is his commandment that we should believe the name of the Son of God and have and love one another as he gave us commandments. You see, we have to do these. We can't neglect them. And then in 24, and he that keepeth the commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit of God. We have him in us, the Holy Spirit. And then we, as we saw, the holy temple is in our bodies. You see, and his pure blood, we have blood, we have redemption through his blood. By his own blood, Christ entered it once into the holy place. And see, once we get to these and understand them and know them, our life changes. And this is in Colossians now, once again, verse 9. Desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That produces worship for us. When we are reading these and what God has willed for those who are redeemed by the blood of his son, how we are constituted in him holy. This is the greatest thing put into the place of sons, accepted in the beloved heirs of God, sealed and indwelt by his Holy Spirit, is the knowledge with which Christians or believers should be filled. I know this. 
I've lived it, but I've given out the Word of God, and that makes a difference. I have to study. For 40 years, I've had a Bible lesson every week, so I've had to study, and it's been the greatest gift in the world. And this knowledge of His will is growing knowledge and must govern the walk of every believer. And that's what I want you to do today, Colossians 1.10, with a true believer, only as walking worthy of Christ can we abound and obey in obedience to God. You have to read the Word or you can't be, have wisdom. And this is the reason that you love the Word of God. And what will please Him, it produces fruit bearing. Go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the hardest Bible verse for me is, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I want every person that's listening today to get down on your knees and thank God for giving him. God, our Heavenly Father in heaven, giving us his own son to t go to the cross to die for all of us. And what are we doing for him? Strengthened with all might, one, Colossians 1, 10 and 11. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. I live the abundant life, giving the joy of the Lord to everybody, counseling with them, and there's nothing like it. And 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partaker of the inheritance. We have all of his inheritance. This is the greatest gift in the world, in the saints of light. We're children of light. We're saints of light. And this is the believer priest satis. Every person is sanctified by the pure priest for each of us. Hebrews 13, 15. All the th things that he has given us in this book, it's already here. This is Hebrews 13. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. This is a, there's nothing like it. I can tell you I've lived it, and it has, it has changed my whole life, and I have had the greatest life that anyone could ever have, and it's all from him. And then he says, in the midst of the tribulation and suffering strength is supplied through the might of his glory. You see, after we are raptured to be with the Lord, the seven-year tribulation period is when everything is going to happen, that we have never seen or never heard, and this is not good, how bad it is. And I have given lessons on it, and I want every person that's listening to read the Word of God. And as I said before, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, 1st, 2nd Peter, and in Colossians 1, 13, in Him, in Christ, we are sons, we're sons of God. And if sons, then heirs of God. That's what we are. And this is the greatest gift. And just like I read the believer's priest, that's what we are. This is the greatest gift in the world. And the full result of all of this is learning the word of God. In Christ's redemption, the forgiveness of sins, all of us, Christ exalted to be the head of the body, the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. God sees us only as in Christ, the greatness of his blessing, the son of his love, blessed possessions, blessed assurance, in Christ fit for glory, in Christ delivered from the power of darkness. And this is Colossians 1.15. His absolute deity, who is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of God in all fullness and perfection. We are the most blessed people in the world. Romans eleven thirty six. For him and through him and to him 
are all things. To him be glory forever and ever. We're going to be in heaven, and it won't cost us anything. It's all pure. The mansions in heaven are waiting for us. And this, that, now this is why I have tears. Every person that don't go to heaven, that's not born again, they're going to a place called hell. And God did not make that for people. He made that for the devil and his angels. And this is something that every person can have right now. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. We're already that. As a child of God, we have everything in this book that he's given to us. And now I'm going to read this last thing before I go because I'm so concerned. God did not make this. We have pure gold with our heavenly mansions. Pure gold. And it's all ours. We don't have to take anything with us. And then Satan knows it is woe time, as I said before. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 11 and 12. When the wicked one, Satan, if you are obeying Satan, you are not obeying God. You're obeying your enemy whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. When you tell a lie, it is from Satan. And then we get to the things of the evil things. With the beast appears out of the sea. The second comes up out of the earth. Both are Satan, controlled men, a trinity of evil, dragon. Dragon, beast, and false prophets are the satanic, are the satanic trinity. Satan's imitation of the divine trinity. And see, where are we going to? Look at this. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. And then the people that do not obey what God's word says, here's the difference in all of us. And it's so pure that you want to hear it. And this is the greatest gift in the world for every person. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, now these are the people that are not going to heaven. They're going to an eternal place, the blackness of darkness forever. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is for those that don't know Christ. I'm here today because God has burdened my heart over the, you, and I want everybody to go to heaven. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers today, and we're praying for a hundredfold.